Oh no. What a mess. I built a fence over this last weekend and now my shop is very messy. I'm gonna clean it. I haven't added them all up, but I'm pretty sure this lure has been the most requested one of all. I'm gonna make the crawdad. That's the stencil I'm gonna be using. It's uh, looks like four and three quarters inches, somewhere around there, almost five. I'm gonna make it out of poplar wood because I'm actually gonna go for a lipless crankbait version of this with jointed arms. So the line tie is going to be up here somewhere. This is going to kind of bend down and catch water while these go flapping in the back. So what I don't know yet is if I'm going to put hooks on each arm or if I'm going to put them up on the body or off the nose here. I don't know. But when I get to carving on this thing and get it further along, I'm, I'll figure it out. This is going to be a good size crawdad, but not unrealistic. They do get that big, around here at least. I put a piece of green treated lumber on my bandsaw table and it got all rusty. That's better. Wow, if you have work to do like this, like really fine detailed cutting and you don't have a, a scroll saw, get an eighth inch bandsaw blade. It's nice. Or is that a quarter inch? It's definitely an eighth. Never mind. It's an eighth inch. There we go. That was a lot of fine cutting on the bandsaw. It's going to be a lot of detail on this bait. I'm looking forward to it. So now I got to cut the crawdad out from this angle and I'm leaving a lot of material right here. And I'm leaving some extra material down here for where I attach the arms to, or the pinchers to, because I'm not sure about that yet. There's the body. Now if I screw up the pinchers, I got two for each arm. It looks like crawdads are much more flat on the bottom, so I'm gonna really round off the top and kind of leave a flat bottom on this before I get any more detailed with the carving. Off camera, I started carving on one of the claws and I think I figured out how I'm gonna put the hooks on this bait. Since this is a crawdad, it needs to be in the rocks, and I need to be able to fish it to where I'm skipping it from like rock to rock to rock and staying on the bottom. So it doesn't have to be weedless, but it, I think it has to be snagless for sure. So I'm gonna try to get some, I think some worm hooks with weed guards on them and somehow get them between the claws and sticking out with the weed guard, weed guard on them still. I'm not completely sure how I'm gonna do that yet, but I really want to go for that. I think that would be awesome. Since these arms are going to be a structural part of the lure that if it hooks a fish, they're going to have to carry a load, I'm going to leave quite a bit of material, quite a bit of wood. I'm not going to make them super thin like an actual crawdad's arms. So I got both of the claws and the body super roughly carved out. Now I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to get the weedless hooks that'll go in the arms. Okay, I'm going to go. These are going to be the hooks that I use for this bait. They're uh wacky weedless and they got the little weed guard on there that's really easy to push down so if fish bites down anywhere near the claws you'll be able to set the hook into them i think that should work just fine looks cool too so for me this is pretty complicated I blew up this big picture of a crawdad and I transferred all the detail I'm comfortable with onto the bait. And for now, that is all I'm gonna carve. When I get this done, I'm gonna then go to the sides and then from the sides to the belly and take it step by step. I think that's the only way I'm gonna be able to carve all this detail and make it look somewhat realistic. When you feel like you bit off more than you can chew when you're carving, just 
break it into baby steps, you know? It's feeling a little bit more comfortable about the carving, so I, I'm a, I think I'm gonna sketch the sides now. I'm gonna save the belly for later, but I'm gonna sketch the sides and establish them, and I'll carve all of the top and all the sides before I go get to the belly. I'd say that's a good start. So now it's just a matter of going along every single line that I drew and scoring it. And yes, I'm using a utility knife to do this. Don't make fun of me. It's what I'm most comfortable with. Here is where I'm at. I got quite a bit of it carved out, even the claws. I think I'm at the point now though where I'm gonna drill out the lead hole. I guess figure out where I want the lead holes and drill them out. That way I can just carve around them instead of uh, drilling into my carvings after they're done. I really like this though. So typically on a lipless crankbait, you wanna put the weight a little bit forward because you want the front to catch water and wobble like that. On this bait, it's a little bit more complicated. You see the shape of it. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to get much weight in the front here because it's so thin. And up here is too high if I'm gonna put weight right there. So uh, right now I don't really know what to do, but I'll think about it. So here's my genius plan. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna try to put most of the weight up front kind of in this area, in this area, and having two spots right here will really help with getting more weight up here, I think. And then I'm just gonna put a little, just a dab of lead right there. That's as far up as I can get it, but also as low as I want it, because I don't want lead up here because it could kind of put it off balance and make it want to turn over more. I want it in the belly. So I think that's the most reasonable place I can put it. I do want this bait to sink slowly too. So I'm gonna have to be careful when I am pouring lead into it. This is a 3 8 thin, 3 8 inch Forstner bit. Never have my drill press plugged in. That would just be too convenient. There's the two tail holes. Well, I guess there's all the holes. I think that'll work. So now I just gotta get the belly details carved out, uh, get some pilot holes drilled for the hardware, make the hardware, and then I can seal the bait and then I can put the lead in it. I always think I'm just going to tell you guys the next step, but I always tell you like five. That worked out pretty good. I think I'm gonna do the same on the front of the pinchers. So I've got a good start on the belly carving. Now I'm gonna start making this bait's hardware, all of the line ties and the hook hangers. So this is a uh, 0.032 inch thick stainless steel wire. It's what I'll use to make this bait's line ties and hook hangers. I think I just need three. Two for the claws and one for the line tie. Oh yeah, I need to do, I need four more for the joints because the two arms are gonna be jointed.
This wire is pretty rigid too. So that's really hot. So that's the wire for the line tie. The wire for the hook hangers, I'm actually gonna put the hooks on already and not install them until the bait's done. Here we go. That's gonna be off the end of a claw. That's for connecting a claw to the body. I'm gonna have two of those. Dang it. Chuck on this drill is not small enough. It doesn't hold small bits. Didn't even think of that. So for the claws, I think I'm just gonna drill straight between the two pinchers, as deep as I can get it. Almost got it put together. Man, this bait's gonna deserve a really nice paint job. Hope I can give it a good one. Okay, I'm kinda confused right now. There we go. There we go. That's the crawdad put together. Okay. I'm gonna take this bait back apart and dip each part in some wood sealer. I think I'm just gonna fill up these lead holes all the way, see how it sinks after that. If I need to remove any, I'll just drill it out. It is close to wanting to sink. Man, that's hard to tell if when I put the clear coat on, it's gonna sink or not. I think I wanna try to add more weight, just to be safe. I put, I actually put two extra holes in it, in the belly. One between the ones on the tail and one just above the one on the belly. But it does that now. It literally just sits straight up. So the line tie is way down here and it's gonna kick it out. I think it'll skip along the rocks like that and look like a crawdad that's sticking out of the rocks. I think that'll work good. It'll just look like a little crawdad sticking straight up. <laughs> and the hooks are exposed up here. That might be perfect. This is five minute epoxy mixed with some glass microspheres. That's a really steep angle. So over the next five minutes, I'm gonna have to kind of keep pushing this epoxy up towards the top so it stays even. After this coat of polyurethane, I'm gonna paint it. So I think that is a gorgeous color for crawdads. But I also want to add some blues into this one too. So kind of like that at the same time. Probably going to make its claws blue and then some other small features. But yeah, a mix between those two is what I'm going to go for. I'm going to start with white. I'm kind of having a hard time deciding on what's the first color I want to put on this bait. I'm leaning towards red. I give the whole bait a really bright coat of red and then I can go in with the greens. And then the greens, they won't be so green, they'll be kind of reddish green and I think that's good. 
like an olive-ish green. I think that's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm actually gonna start with a, an iridescent red. I also tried to only put the red on spots where I knew the red would be. There's a little bit, there's overspray on where the red's not gonna be, but I tried not to overdo it. Now I'm gonna go back over in spots with the green and make sure to leave a lot of red. That's a decent start. I like how there's a really sharp color transition and that the iridescent red is still nice and shiny after the green. Now I'm just going along every crack in the exoskeleton and putting it in a, uh, like a water thin brown so it seeps into the cracks and kind of outlines them. For the details on the paint job, this is probably the most important step to, to just set everything apart. I think I have this crawdad exactly how I want it. I just have to paint some black eyes onto it and I got the pinchers how I want them to. Really blue at the, at the top and kind of fades down into reds and greens. Now it's ready for clear coat. That was 30 minute epoxy with a little bit of denatured alcohol and glitter in it. Hey honey. What? Is it dying? <laughs> you enjoying the new fence? It's the middle of the night right now and I'm putting this bait together because I want to get up early and go fishing with it tomorrow morning. The clear coat is still just a little bit too tacky to handle with your bare hands so I'm wearing a glove. That's the crawdad with all of its hardware installed but uh, there's one last detail to do and that's the antennas coming off the front. And for those, I'm going to use this stuff. I think that'll be a good color. Kind of a bright blue with some green flashes in there. I'm going to keep it simple. Just. Drilling a small hole and then gluing a strand in. I realize that I can touch it with my hands and it doesn't do anything. The clear coat's sad enough already. I'm just dipping it in super glue and putting it in the hole. There we go. It's got some antennas now. That is the finished crawdad. Pretty awesome. First stop this morning, I'm meeting a subscriber that I met the other day at a uh, farm pond. I've never fished this pond before, it's a private one. And he knows the guy who owns it, and he's letting us fish here. And apparently there's some very nice bass in there. So, we'll see if the craw can catch a bass at a farm pond. Not sure where I'm gonna go after that.
there's something. Oh, I have no idea what that was. I came back home to eat some lunch and uh, recharge some batteries, but at first pond was a bust. I, uh, I had one fish on the entire time. It was pretty big. It was putting some bend in that big rod, uh, the big swim bait rod, but I lost it. I think next I'm gonna try uh, an actual, or I'm gonna try a lake that actually has crawdad in it. Seems reasonable, right? Before going to the lake, I decided to try out this creek. It's a small creek, but I know that there's smallmouth in here and smallmouth love crawdads, worth a shot. By the way, I give away every single bait that I make to my Patreon supporters. Every dollar pledged is a chance to win every bait that I made that month. It really, sorry about the lawnmower, but it really helps out the channel, so I'm glad I can give away these baits to people who directly support it. And if you're not a Patreon supporter, still, thank you for watching. It's looking a little bit better down here, but it is steep right here. I don't wanna fall. You guys see those bass down there? That's what we're looking for. Okay. Well, I fished. I fished. And I fished some more. But I couldn't get anything on the craw today. Kind of disappointing. Chip chip, come on. Other than at the pond this morning, I didn't see anybody catch anything else today and I fished for all day. Over 12 hours I fished for. Just about 8 o'clock. Started at 7.30 this morning. Rough day. That's okay though, all part of the challenge. What do you say, Chip? Oh boy. On to the next bait.